On show 465, Byton Ray's Money, a production ready looking Tycon, and the Teslas that heal themselves. Well, those stories and many more coming up on today's podcast. Hello, uh, my name is Martin Lee. Thank you for listening today. Good morning, good afternoon, or indeed good evening. In fact, wherever you are in the world, Welcome to the show. Tuesday, 7th of May edition. And what I do is I go through all the EV stories I can find every single day and I try and just distill them into 15, 20 minutes, sometimes longer if I ramble. So I'll try and be quick. And then it's your little bite size, your little nugget of EV news daily and for free. Unless you want to support on Patreon, you're more than welcome to. MyEV.com is a website in the USA that chooses to support me. And I'm enormously grateful to the entire team behind MyEV.com. Coming up to a year, must be. I'll look at out for our anniversary since uh, we first spoke to them. They are building a marketplace. They have built a marketplace for buying and selling and learning about EVs in the USA. I mentioned Byton at the top of the show. Byton are gathering millions in financing from a big main investor. The Chinese electric startup maker called Byton is about to complete a $500 million financing round, which will be led by China's state-owned car maker, FAW. They're going to lead it with approximately $100 million, says Chris Randall for the industry service Electrive.com. Well, Bloomberg reports this with reference to insiders familiar with the situation. FAW had already invested around $260 million in Byton only last year. Well, the value of the startup, which confirmed the departure of co-founder Carsten Breitfeld in the middle of last month, is expected to rise to $2.5 billion valuation. After the latest round of financing, neither Byton nor FAW have made an official statement on the matter, though. Of course, Byton are going to be very busy releasing their m Byte SUV, otherwise known as, a.k.a. the car with one giant screen across the entire dash. You think that the Model 3 is a distinctive-looking EV with that single screen. Try the m Byte, which has one enormous widescreen from behind the driver, behind the steering wheel, all the way across and all the way to the passenger side as well. Bite and say of the m Byte, and get ready for a bit of corporate speak here, and I quote, Conventional automotive styling features are giving way to innovative design icons. Side view cameras replace side mirrors. Iconic face recognition cameras provide user identification. And Byton's smart services show a situation-based interacting light design. I told you it was some corporate speak. In other words, they're putting lots of toys inside these cars, if it ever gets made, of course. The lounge feeling is intensified by digital provisions. A 49-inch shared experience display 49 inches wide and it's uh, what they want to put inside the car gesture control with what they call air touch interactive using voice commands as well all these features underscore their digital capability they say and now they've got even more money behind them to make the m byte a reality i'll pop a link to byton's website in the show notes if you want to click straight through to see to remind yourself of what the m byte looks like and of course the electrive article as well Well, an undisguised version of the all-electric Porsche Taycan has been snapped on the road ahead of its Frankfurt reveal, says Auto Express magazine and their website. Only a couple of hours ago, I picked this up. Porsche's upcoming all-electric saloon has been caught completely undisguised ahead of its official debut at the Frankfurt Motor Show later this year. Spy shots on autoexpress.com show the best look yet at the Tycon styling. A lot of 718 Boxster and Cayman influence at the front end, smaller details like retractable and flush door handles, and conventional door mirrors can be picked out in these new photos. Auto Express also point out that Porsche claims the powertrain will allow the Tycon to do 0 to 60 in under 3.5 seconds, 0 to 124 miles an hour in under 12 seconds. Top speed of 155. Crucially, The performance is repeatable over and over and over again. We've seen those videos of it on the test track. With Porsche, of course, you can't have any kind of mode like in Teslas where you have to precondition the battery and then sit there while it warms or cools and only do a couple of runs. It's a Porsche. It's a performance car. The brand isn't worth them 
putting out any kind of beta product if you like when they do this it's got to be right first time range is less important with the Tycon than pure charge speed with an 800 volt system they say they can add 62 miles in four minutes or 250 miles in a 15 minute wee break I mean Porsche don't call it a wee break but I'm thinking if you're on a road trip and you pull into the service station and you are gonna have a comfort break maybe pick up a coffee maybe a roll maybe a croissant oh you know what a bagel anyway I digress I, can you tell I'm so hungry I'm not eating all day today uh, that uh, I'm actually just fantasizing about food at service stations I think a 15 minute wee break and then you're back on the road 250 miles added fabulous of course the model 3 has been pictured from tesla charging at a thousand miles an hour as well now for all you uh people who like to review this podcast and say that i talk about tesla far too much here's some tesla news tesla's working to decrease their service wait times by offering in-car problem diagnoses and pre-ordering of necessary parts as insideevs.com now the silicon valley electric automakers global fleet not only has the power to diagnose issues in the car but to specify what parts are breaking or have broken and need replacing owners are made aware of the potential problems that the ev is undergoing which also means Means that Tesla can order the parts ahead of your service center visit. The car literally knows what's wrong with it and will order the parts so that when you go to the service center, they're there ready and waiting. The car literally heals itself. Of course, if the issue is dire, you might need to get your car in for a service right away, but in many cases, if it's not an urgent issue, uh, we'll call this an amber warning, should we? Then you might be able to wait a little bit. With the latest update, you can see the problem. It'll order the parts, or you order the parts, but you know we're not far off from the, the, the car basically being night Rider and calling up the service centre itself. Uh, servicing, uh, scheduling your service, and it's another step to provide better all-over experience for Tesla owners. I'll pop a link to Inside EVs in the show notes. Now, we're going to have another look at a video of a flyover, a drone flyover of Tesla's Shanghai Gigafactory, otherwise known as Gigafactory 3, otherwise known as a building which is blooming enormous and work only started a few weeks ago. And this, you know what, take away Tesla, take away electric cars. How on earth does anyone build a building this massive in what was basically a muddy field? There was not. I mean, you saw the shots, the beforehand shots. It wasn't like a, an industrial area that were, you know, missing a factory or two. This is wasteland. How is there a factory on it now? Well, in the latest aerial flyover, the main roof structure is pretty much complete. The walls along the east side of the main structure are complete. The rest is rapidly being finished. The progress over the last month has been spectacular, uh, says Kling Technica, posting a drone video by Jason Wang. Whilst there remains some construction work to be done on taller structures to the north and south ends of the factory, the central body of the structure looks complete. The main roof is effectively in place. Roof workers are seen in the video finishing up the last remaining patches. The main east side wall is up and the west side wall is near to completion. It's an amazing transformation from the build state even one month ago when the structure was in its early phases. Had a couple of roof panels on but you could what well, you could see right through. Now it's a building with four walls and a roof. How do the Chinese do that? I'll pop a link to Kling Technica in the show notes. Well, Tesla wants to sell its drivers cheaper car insurance. And don't we all want cheaper car insurance? Based on owner's driving and the performance of Tesla's autopilot driver assistance system, says Jalopnik, Tesla said it has better data on the performance of its cars and, uh, and drivers than any insurer does. And Tesla thinks it can lower the insurance costs because of that. Well, from the Wall Street Journal article that Jalopnik uh, Jalopnik picked up on, uh, they say that researchers at the insurance industry-funded Highway Loss Data Institute, that must be a giggle a minute to work at, by the way, the Highway Loss Data Institute, have determined that the crash avoidance systems on the Tesla Model S are reducing physical damage and injury liability claims, while Autopilot is lowering lowering collision claims at the same time. This looks like something that Tesla have promised, and they can probably deliver. 
Well, here in the UK, there is a facilities management company, professional services. They're really big. They're called Mighty. And they, uh, good name, right? But not M I G H T Y M I T I E. But still, good name, Mighty. It, they're moving ahead with plans to electrify 20% of their fleet of smaller vehicles by next year, says FleetEurope.com. Now, Mighty employs 54,000 people across the UK. They operate a fleet of more than 3,500 compact vans and cars. It's so important for a company like this to make the jump to electric cars to at least, well, the first fifth of their fleet being electric. Other big companies, you know this, will see such a big company like this and follow their lead. Companies around the world will go, look, if they can do it, we can do it. And you know they're only doing it to save money. As much as companies like to talk about their green credentials, and I'm sure that somewhere in a press release, Mighty are talking about their wonderful carbon emissions reductions and green credentials, you know that companies do the best thing for the owners and the shareholders, and that means saving money and making money. And moving to EVs in your fleet just saves and makes your money. It's just a fact. Now, they've opted to have a company called PodPoint as their charge point partner. Uh, PodPoint will install 800 charge points, at their offices and employees' homes as well for those employees that have to take their company vehicles home because I'm imagining that Mighty doesn't have a, a car park for 3,500 vehicles at the end of each day. So their employees take their vehicles home, park them at their residences, and PodPoint are putting in the charges for them as well. Great news all around. Love it. Here is another case of something going live and then being deleted immediately. Yesterday on the podcast, by the way, we talked about the VW ID video by the Netherlands branch. <laughs> Sounds like a, a like a community group. The Netherlands branch of VW. You know what? The, like the press office uh, in Amsterdam appear to have posted a video on YouTube and then swiftly deleted it, but not before everybody took screenshots of the VW well, in the video, it was called the ID3. And we all thought the first ID was going to be called the ID Neo or the ID1. It's basically the Golf. It's not a Golf. Don't call it a Golf. It's not the Golf. It's the ID Neo 1 3. And, by the way, slight digression Phil Roberts from Electric Future here in the UK. Yes, Phil Roberts of premium partner of this podcast fame. Phil was saying today on Twitter that actually Wednesday lunchtime is when they will open the reservation system in the UK, maybe all of Europe, for the ID Neo 1 3 golf that's not a golf so if you're listening to this podcast in time yeah get your credit card ready 750 pounds is what it could cost to get a deposit down on the id anyway that was one leak that was one video that was then swiftly deleted here's another a press release that went live online and has now been deleted hyundai motor company deleted a press release where it informed readers of the new model year kona electric the model year is the 2020 model year, but that means they'll start delivering it by the end of 2019 in six months' time. The new 2020 model year Kona, in Europe at least, will get an 11 kilowatt onboard charger. Now, fortunately, Stefan uh, Kopernik saved a screenshot with important information, says Pedro for pushevs.com today. Besides the three phase 11 kilowatt onboard charger, the new Kona gets a new app. Hallelujah, say Kona owners the Hyundai Blue Link app. And hopefully I imagine that on the Blue Link app, when it's released, you'll be able to do all of the things that you should be able to do on an EV app. Optional new center display touchscreen and heated rear seats in Europe. 11 kilowatt onboard chargers should be standard by now, says Pedro. Uh, with an additional charger in parallel, you can reach 22 kilowatts as an option. LG Chem is already producing 11 kilowatt onboard chargers aimed at the European market with an impressive energy efficiency of 95%. Must admit, it's nice to have that three-phase onboard charger. Cars like the new, well, the new Renault Zoe. Looks like it's going to come with up to 100 kilowatt CCS combo, DC fast charging, the kind of thing you'd find on a, like a BMW i3. But also, they're keeping 22 kilowatt AC charging with the onboard charger. And that is the perfect combination. I'll pop a link to push EVs in the show notes. Finally, we got some sales data from here in the UK. Good news, bad news. Eh, you make your mind up. Sales of pure electric cars continue to rise here in the UK. In April 2019, the car market itself was down again, 4%. The car market here in this country is having a really tough time of it. Pure EVs, though, bucked the trend 
up 63% in April, says Next Green Car. Bit of a downward trend for plug-in hybrids, but maybe that's not surprising. There was the removal of the plug-in car grant, the free money for plug-in hybrids, last October. Since then, the market has been going down for plug-in hybrids, but for pure battery electric vehicles, they are on the rise and showing no signs of slowing down. I'll pop a link to Next Screen Car in the show notes. Here we go with our question of the week this week. Keep your answers coming into question of the week, and I'll read them out on Sunday, as we always do. Thanks to myev.com, here's the question. Should EVs celebrate or hide their technology? Should EVs just be like any other normal car? Should it just be like the basic car? One's got a diesel engine, one's got a battery underneath, and they just it just happens to be the propulsion system. Or should EVs show off all of the tech-laden features that they can have being an electric car. Things like preheating and uh, driving itself towards you in summon mode and things like that. Let me know. Email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com is my email address. Hello at evnewsdaily.com. Right, time for the MD bit. Thank you very much to 211 patrons of the podcast whose generosity keeps me going. A Patreon, patreon.com slash evnewsdaily. It's a way of funding your favourite creators. Uh, if you want to... What would mean a lot is if you could leave a little review on iTunes. Not so much because it puts me up the charts or anything, but because other people see the reviews and it might help them make the decision to listen to this show. Then we grow it, then more people know about EVs. If you are on iTunes, just leave a little uh, little rating and review. You know, one star, five star, whatever you think. I did make reference to my most uh, recent review. One of my my most recent one says uh, it's pretty good for coming from a garden shed. Thank you. Uh, It was a compliment. I took it that way. The one before gave three stars and was like too much Tesla news. I mean, give me one star or five star, but don't sit on the fence and go, nah, too much Tesla. Well, look, it's because they're doing a lot. And so there's a lot to talk about. If the other car makers want to send me press releases, I'll I'll talk about them just as much. So please do leave a review. If you want to go to iTunes and leave me your thoughts. In the meantime, Get new episodes by hitting subscribe. We put the show on YouTube, on all the usual podcast places, and on the socials. You can search EV News Daily to find me. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.